G'day guys, welcome back to Reach Me or Teach Me. Apologies to my baseball and hockey fans as uh, I've been on a bit of an NFL binge lately, uh, learning about the game quite heavy. Uh, but I do plan to get back into some baseball and some hockey videos as well, so fear not. Uh, I thought I'd kick this one off. Um, how do I identify the different baseball pitches? It's something that's always really intrigued me. Again, in cricket, we have a lot of different deliveries that we have just based on the grips and how your arm comes over and the shape of your wrist. So that's always fascinated me. This is something that really intrigues me about baseball. Without further ado, let's get into it. Identifying pitches. Hey, if you've ever watched a Major League Baseball game, you probably know how difficult it can be to identify the different types of pitches that pitchers throw. So I put this video together to help you identify the pitches that you might be seeing in a Major League Baseball game. In general, the three oh, things that you're looking at dick. are, number one, the velocity of each pitch, number yeah. two, the movement of each pitch, and number three, and this is kind of a bonus, the pitch arsenal of each individual pitcher. If you go to Baseball Savant, you can look up the various pitches that each pitcher throws. For example, if you know that a pitcher throws a curveball, a four-seam fastball, and a changeup, that narrows it down for you pretty nicely. All right, let's get started. Fastballs. The fastball is the basic pitch of Major League Baseball, and it's the type of pitch that you're going to see the most. There are three basic categories of fastballs, and most Major League pitchers use one of these types of fastballs as their primary pitch. Four seam fastball. The four seam fastball is the most common pitch in Major League Baseball. It's also the easiest to identify because, from the angle of most TV broadcasts, a four seam fastball appears to travel in a straight line with no vertical drop whatsoever. This straight and level movement is a result of the high amount of backspin placed on the ball. Okay. If you see a pitch that's traveling this straight at 90 plus miles an hour, you're probably looking at a four seam fastball. Some four seam fastballs actually appear to travel upwards as they approach the plate, and this is called a rising fastball. Despite the way it looks on yeah, TV, on this ball, upward movement is just an illusion. Sinker or two seam Okay, so the backspin counteracts the natural gravity and, and friction of the air, which will be pushing it down. So putting the backspin on it would maintain that that height. I get that. So four-seam fastball versus a two-seam fastball. In my head, I'm picturing, like I've only got a cricket ball here, but I'm picturing that like a two-seam fastball would be held like you were going to throw it from the outfield. And a four-seam fastball, I feel like maybe you hold the ball more in the hand, like more in all four fingers. Not sure. I thought they were going to explain the grips. I thought they were going to show the various grips. The in fastball. The two-seam fastball, or sinker, has movement as it approaches the plate. This movement is usually downward and or towards the pitcher's arm side, so away from the glove. If you see a pitch at fastball velocity that drops or appears to run or twist towards the pitcher's arm side, you're probably looking at a two-seam fastball. The terminology can get a little bit confusing at first because people call this same type of fastball run or twist towards the pitcher's arm side. You're probably looking at a two-seam fastball. The terminology can get a little bit confusing at first because people call this same type of pitch by two different names. The most common practice is to call it a two-seamer if it arrives up in the zone or if it runs laterally without much downward movement. Reserving the term sinker for a two-seamer that drops or that arrives low in the zone. Okay. But it's also fairly common to use these terms interchangeably or to just use one term. For example, StatCast will call this pitch a sinker every time, even if it arrives up in the zone. Cutter. The cutter is the least common fastball in Major League Baseball. By definition, the cutter is characterized by late and sharp movement towards the pitcher's glove side, so the okay. opposite direction of a sinker. In practice, however, a cutter can also drop or break hard towards the glove side like a slider. The unpredictability of the cutter can make it one of the hardest pitches to identify outright. And in fact, it's not unheard of for major league broadcast crews to disagree about whether a pitcher has just thrown a cutter or another type of pitch. Most commonly a slider about whether a pitcher has just thrown a cutter or another type of pitch. Okay, so he's got a fairly traditional sort of grip on that at the moment. Pitch. And then he's coming through, and is he is he twisting? 
Is he is he twisting his wrist? No, it's just sort of it's almost rolling out the side, so that's got a little bit of side spin on it. Cutter, so the cutter's got the side spin. Most commonly a slider. This looks like a slider actually. <laughs> just a crisp, hard slider, a little break to it. Cutter, they're calling it. The good news is that pitchers who throw a good cutter at the major league level tend to use this pitch quite a bit. So knowing that a pitcher throws a cutter is your first step in identifying what that pitcher's cutter looks like. Okay. Breaking balls. All right. So, f so fastballs go straight. A sinker can drop or go to the arm side. So that's. That's like an in-swinger in our game, and a cutter will go like an out-swinger. All right. Breaking balls are pitches thrown with significant top or side spin cool. that causes the ball to change direction as it approaches the plate. This change in direction is called break. There are two basic here. types of breaking balls. Okay. So curve that's the curveball is generally the slower of the two breaking balls. The archetypal 12 to 6 curveball gets its name from the fact that it breaks downwards as if it's traveling from 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock. Mm -hmm. But a curveball can also travel towards the pitcher's glove side or come in straight and then bottom out. The curveball is almost always the slowest pitch that a pitcher throws. <laughs> so if you're looking at a pitch that's traveling anywhere from 60 to 80 miles an hour, with a looping or a dropping motion, okay. it's probably a curveball. Slider. A slider is a breaking ball that breaks diagonally towards the pitcher's glove hand side. Sliders are generally thrown faster and with a tighter break than curveballs. As you watch these sliders, you might be noticing that some of them are bearing a resemblance to curveballs, and others are bearing a. Okay, so slider is going glove side, so that's more like a cutter, but it's slower than a cutter. Is that right? So it's okay, so he's got their velocity, 75 to 85 mile an hour. So yeah, so a cutter would be like a fast slider. A resemblance to cutters. This is a good time to say that these pitches all more or less exist on a continuum. And people sometimes use terms like slurve to describe pitches that don't quite fit into one of these categories. In any case, if you're talking about a slider or a slurve or a curveball, you're talking about a breaking ball. Okay. And the good news is, if you just call one of these pitches a breaking ball, you're never going to be wrong. Off-speed pitches. While the term off-speed pitch technically refers to any pitch that's not a fastball, in practice, the term off-speed pitch is usually reserved for pitches that mimic fastballs, but that come in at a lower velocity. There are two types of off-speed pitches that you will commonly see. Change up. A changeup is a pitch that's disguised to look like a fastball, but arrives about 8 to 15 miles an hour slower. To my eye, most changeups look like sinkers, but again, they arrive 8 to 15 miles an hour slower than that pitcher's fastball. Let's take a look at a couple examples. Here is John Means throwing a fastball at 95, and then here is the changeup. When we sew this down, we see this is just a standard four-seam fastball, 95, and the changeup looks like it could be a sinker, but arrives 11 miles an hour slower than the fastball. Here's Luke. I, I really want to see... Um... The grips. So if you know of a video that demonstrates the, the, the pitcher's grips and, and the various scenarios, I'm trying to do it in my head based on our game. I feel like the change-up is very much like a like a like maybe a two-seam or even a four-seam fastball, but you'd potentially withhold the ball deeper in the hand so that it's got that little bit more friction coming out. Um, that's something that some of our players will do. Another way that they'll do it is... They'll, they'll split their fingers a bit more so that the, the, ball, the ball's just a bit tighter in between the fingers. And as they're coming out, again, it just comes out, it's got that slight sluggishness as it comes out the hand. Is that, I really want to see a video demonstrating the grips. Help me out. Lucas Giolito, fastball 96, and then the changeup arrives at 85. When we slow this down, we see it's a standard four seamer again. And then with the changeup, same delivery comes in, looking like it could be a fastball, but it arrives at 85. The changeup is designed to be deceptive, and even professional broadcasters can get it wrong. One. Uh, fastball. Taken low. Two fastballs. I think that was a changeup. Think it was a change? Yep. 89 miles an hour. Yeah, he throws harder than that. This is a pitch that becomes much easier to identify once you start paying attention to the pitch velocities yeah. that are displayed yeah. on screen. Splitter. Okay. 
The splitter is an off-speed pitch that is thrown like the fastball, but that has a significant and late downward break. This diving movement is a result of the low spin rate placed on splitters, which pitchers achieve by using a split finger grip that gives That's this pitch its about. name. There you go. It's easy to see a splitter and at first think that it might be another type of pitch that has some significant downward movement, like a curveball or a sinker. But once you start paying attention to the velocity of each pitch, you should be able to pick out the splitters. Here is Shohei Otani throwing a curveball at 79 and a splitter at 88. When we slow these down, we can see that the curveball has kind of a tumbling action to it, whereas the splitter comes in looking like it might be a fastball and then just drops. The splitter is ultimately not a very common pitch, so knowing that a pitcher has a splitter in their arsenal is a good first step in identifying that pitcher's splitter. Less common pitches. The fastballs, breaking balls, and off-speed pitches that we've seen so far constitute the vast majority of pitches that you'll see when watching Major League Baseball. There are a few other types of pitches that you might see, and we'll go through them pretty quickly. Ephus. An Ephus pitch is an incredibly slow and high arcing <laughs> breaking ball, if you want to call it that. Fork ball. The fork ball is like an extreme splitter, and these will often land in the dirt or touching home plate. Screwball. A screwball is a breaking ball that breaks like a mirror image of a slider, so towards the pitcher's arm side. It's been years since one has been thrown at the major league level. Huh. Knuckleball. And finally, there's the knuckleball, which is an unpredictable and floaty pitch that's thrown with almost no spin whatsoever. So that covers pretty much every pitch you're going to see when you watch Major okay. League Baseball. If you know that you're going to be watching a baseball game and you want to get better at identifying pitches, the best thing you can do is go to Baseball Savant and search for the starting pitchers for that game. See what they pitch so that you are prepared and you know it's coming. Beyond that, just keep paying attention to how the pitches move and the velocity of the pitches that you see on TV and it won't be long before you are identifying pitches pretty well. Real quick before we wrap up, it should be made clear that each example that was shown in this video is a well-executed example of each pitch type. And in order to show the full movement of each pitch type, I only included videos where the batter did not make contact with the ball. In reality, not every pitch that you see in a Major League Baseball game is going to be this pretty or is going to conform this well to the definition of each pitch type. Breaking balls might not break. <laughs> this is called a hanging breaking ball and they happen all the time. Hanging breaking balls are usually hit for power, so you don't want them. Pitchers will miss fire on their fastball. And pitchers are always changing up the velocity, movement, and location of their pitches in order to keep batters guessing. So even the same type of pitch from the same pitcher can and will look different from pitch to pitch. So give yourself some time. And if you want to identify pitches by just seeing them on TV, I'm pretty sure you'll be able to get there within a couple weeks if you just keep at it. Feel free to come back to this video anytime you want for reference. Unless it's a submariner style pitcher, in which case you're on your own. That's cool. Um, that was really helpful. That, that was really good. Um, we use so many similar techniques. And I'm sure it all just comes down to the various grips and, and again, whether it's at the end of the fingers or whether it's buried deep in the hand or your fingers are split. It's the science behind pitching is so similar to the science behind bowling and cricket. That's That was an extremely helpful video. Uh, if you enjoyed it, folks, and you haven't already done so, please hit that subscribe button and we'll see you in the next one.